All right, second section, magnetic flux. The, you just got one concept in this section, it's um, 22-2, define the magnetic flux through a surface. And it's just, it's just a definition, so we can't argue with the definition. The magnetic flux is denoted by the Greek symbol capital phi. This is a capital phi in Greek. This is a lowercase phi. And um, that's the magnetic flux through a surface. It's measured in units of so-called Webers, W-E-B-E-R. And that unit is a tesla times a meter squared. The magnetic flux is defined as the magnitude of the magnetic field, B, times the area of a surface. Whatever surface you're interested in finding the flux through, it's the area of that surface. And then finally, the cosine of the angle between the normal to that surface, what's the normal? Just a reminder, here's our surface, denoted in blue here. The normal is denoted as a red arrow. It's the direction perpendicular to the surface. Normal means perpendicular in physics. And the angle phi, so this is the lowercase phi, is the angle between the normal and the direction of the magnetic field. So the direction of the magnetic field here is denoted by a black arrow, and that angle phi is the angle between the normal, perpendicular, and the direction of the magnetic field. That's the definition of magnetic flux. Do we believe these units? Well, you've got a magnetic field here that's, that's uh, in units of Tesla, and you've got an area, and an area is length times a width, that's units of meter squared. So Tesla times meter squared is, is the Weber. That's it for the definition of the magnetic flux. So let's look at a couple of different cases. If we imagine this surface, this is the edge of the surface. So you have to imagine the sur this black line, the thick black line here represents the edge of the surface. So in this case, um, the normal to the surface is that direction. And perpendicular to the surface, this is a normal direction. And in that case, the angle between the normal and the magnetic field, magnetic field lines are denoted by red arrows here, the angle between this dotted normal and these magnetic field lines is zero. So, in this case, if phi equals zero, then cosine of phi, what's the cosine of zero? Well, it's one, you say. So the, the flux, in this case, is just going to be b times a times one, which is just b times a. So we get the maximum possible flux. Let's look at this case. So in this case, this dotted line here is the normal direction, and it makes an angle of 60 degrees with the magnetic field. So remember, I've taken the same coil that I had here and I've turned it like this. So I have to imagine the coil or the surface, I'm calling it a coil, but it's just a surface, um, is in this direction and the normal is out that way, the perpendicular. So we get a, an angle of uh, 60 degrees, and in this case, phi is B A cosine 60 degrees. Well, this cosine of 60 is the same as sine of 30, it's a half. So we get B A over two. So that's kind of halfway point. Then this is the case where we have magnetic fields still in the same direction, 
But now the, the surface is, is like this. The normal is out to the right. The angle between the surface and the magnetic field is 90 degrees. What do we get in this case for the magnetic flux? BA cosine 90 degrees. And what's the cosine of 90? It's zero. So the important thing to understand here about magnetic flux is that it's a measure of how much of the magnetic field penetrates the surface of interest. Here we get a lot of magnetic field puncturing that surface. Think of it as, you know, bullets or something puncturing through the surface. Here we get less puncturing the surface, and here none of the magnetic field lines pass through the surface. So we don't get any flux. And uh, that's just what we've been saying. It's proportional to the number of field lines that pass through or puncture a surface. 